Welcome to another Developer Spotlight video from Mapbox. My name is Chris Wong, Senior Developer Evangelist, and we like to do these videos to showcase some of the interesting, notable, beautiful, uh, and wonderful things that developers are building with Mapbox tools and technology. Um, so today I'm joined by Benjamin Trandin, who is uh, the developer behind Chrono Trains, a very interesting uh, interactive visualization of uh, time travel distance uh, by train in Europe. Uh, so that's a very simple overview of what it does, and uh, I'll let you explain it in a moment. But before we start, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, uh, what kind of things you do uh, as a developer? Um, yeah, hi, Chris. So um, I was an engineer at Mapbox uh, until 2019, actually. So I'm a software developer, uh, currently working in an ag tech company. And uh, I've dealt with maps for most of my career and uh, mainly with Mapbox tools. Uh, nowadays, I'm still dealing with the spatial in the agriculture uh, field. And uh, I also run some hobby projects, including Chrono Trains, um, all of which have to do with maps uh, <laughs> in a way or another. Awesome. So, uh, like I said, Chrono Trains is a is an interactive map uh, that shows how far you can get uh, from virtually any train station in Europe. Um, so, why don't you take a moment and give us like a quick demo and tell us, you know, while you're while you're showing off what it does, maybe tell us a bit about, uh, you know, what the inspiration was, why you built it, some of the things you thought about while you were putting it together. Um, but let's take a look at Chrono Trains. Uh, so, Chrono Trains is a in an interactive map of Europe uh, in white are all the countries that are covered um, by the data. And if you hover your mouse uh, over any city or train station, you can see how far you can reach uh, in up to five hours from this station. So we have different uh, isochrones. So isochrones are geometries uh, of area reachable here by train uh in a given time so the first one is one hour then two hours three up to five hours so you can see that from paris you can reach uh, london and pretty far into the uk in five hours um if you leave from madrid for example uh, you'll barely leave spain and uh, if you hover your mouse up over the other parts of Spain, you can see that uh, it's pretty much centralized over Madrid. Um, so this visualization allows us to, um, to visually see like the different decisions that states took uh, regarding train travel and uh, would also be a convenient tool for trip planning. And did I see a, um, I think when you when you had Paris selected there, there was something that showed up in the top left. Is, is there more information under that? Or did, I don't know what that was. Yeah. Uh, it's just a way to, to lock uh, the view on a specific train station and then zoom I see. somewhere else. Otherwise, uh, the visualization will adapt to wherever your mouse is. So yeah, it's also, Pretty entertaining to see how the shapes move. So it looks like on the map, I mean, we're we're seeing the, this is a fascinating visualization of the rail network to just show how connected uh, all these places are, which is amazing. Um, and like you said, you can go to the, the big cities and see, uh, you know, that you can get really far because they're central and then you can go to some smaller cities and, and there's still quite a lot of connectivity. You can cover a lot of ground in a short time. Um, mm -hmm. That's amazing. So can you tell us more like where did where did this come from and why did you build it? Um, so I was looking at uh, isochrone data available for France um, by the French rail network. And this was inspired by some old maps that I found, which were distorting the geographical space to have the places that are a shorter travel time away, closer to each other. And I wondered what this would give uh, you know, for any place in France. And um, I found a data source that was covering the whole of Europe. Uh, so I started building chrono trains from that. So that data source is uh, the Deutsche Bahn, so the uh, German rail network. Um, and I'm building a graph of 
travel times from uh, stations that, I, that can be reached directly with a single train. And then from that graph, uh, computing sh shortest distance or shortest time between any pair of train stations in Europe. Awesome. And so is it fair to say, like, I see small dots around the edges of this isochron right now. Is each one of those just one station? I see. So they just... Uh, yeah. Oh. So, so you can reach, for example, uh, Bielefeld from Dresden in five hours. Uh, but this small patch in between doesn't have any train stations. So this is uh, why they are isolated points. Fascinating. I, actually, this is uh, another question I had, but have there been any copycats of this? Because I'm I'm deeply interested in building the exact same thing for New York, um, for just for a city <laughs> instead of a whole continent. Um, but, uh, yeah. Interesting. Uh, I haven't seen any so far. Um, some of the code is, uh, is specific to the data sources that I used, but uh, it's also open source. So I would be interested in <laughs> in seeing this replicated in, in other places, uh, uh, as long as you can get the data. I, a few people suggested that I do the US, but this would be very underwhelming, I think. <laughs> yeah, it would be very underwhelming. I mean, I think also just from a U, UX perspective, what I love about this map is that you don't, you don't really have to, you don't really have to like click and it, like the exploration happens without a click, right? And you know, we've, we've heard about the concept of click tax and um, you just have to think about what you're going to do. And like, literally the user just moves the mouse. As long as it's over Europe, it'll do something and it becomes, uh, you know, this instant feedback. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. what makes it really compelling. Uh, would you, would you agree with that? I mean, how, did you think about that? Did you like, yeah, you know, I think this is part of uh, how, how it got uh, a bit of success. Uh, you can just explore without any goal. <laughs> um, Awesome. Um, okay, so I mean, there's a lot of data being shown here. So can you tell us a bit more about the technology stack? Um, it's not just a, it's not just the web map. This this data, mm -hmm. is, it's coming. I think what I saw when I inspected the traffic was that you know there's a file coming over the network for every single uh, every single isochrone that that shows. So as you move the mouse, there's lots yeah. of network activity. Um, can you tell us more um, about this? Oh. So yeah, a lot of the work went into trying to make this as uh, snappy as possible. Um, so first of all, I pre-compute all the isochrones. Uh, so we have about 30,000 stations in our data sets. And for each station, we can uh, build this graph of other stations that can be reached uh, within an, any given time. From that, you can compute the, the geometries. And so those are stored in a Postgres database. Um, uh, so it's kind of static data. So uh, a lot of the work went into like other caching uh, strategy, strategies. Uh, I'm using Vercel to deploy this website. And they have a very powerful CDN. Uh, and this is where most of the isochrones will come from as long as they've been requested at least once by any clients. Um, so their CDN takes care of, of putting the data as close to the user as possible. And then there's also some uh, client-side cache. Uh, whenever you request the same isochrones twice, uh, they'll be fetched from your local cache. Is that, and, does, that just grow for, does that grow forever or does it like over like store a certain number locally? Uh, there's there's some limits uh, both in time and space and uh, yeah I don't know how much the whole data set weighs about uh, one gigabyte but hmm. there's hardly any chance that you'll hover over all the stations. Um, there's also like for, client side as well, uh, there's some priority between the stations. So uh, hidden on the map are all the station features uh, that are stored as, as points. So they are loaded client side. And uh, you know, if you are a map.scale user, you'll know that uh, uh, points can occlude 
uh, each other. And so not all of the stations are queryable from a, a low zoom. Uh, and there'll be a, a priority given to the points that are most on top uh, mm -hmm. uh, in that layer. And then I think you mentioned actually just using turf um, to do sort yeah. of uh, compounding isochrones. Uh, or I, I mean, you, it all just starts with a radius around the station, and then that that actually becomes the isochrone because you're not doing a lot of. Sounds yeah. like you're not doing a lot of complex like street network stuff. You're just kind of assuming there's a certain distance from a station, right? Uh, so there's the the rail network is uh, basically just the stations and distances. Or times between stations and uh, you're right that uh, the remaining time if you traveled four hours to the station and you still have one hour I just uh, put a one hour radius as a cycle around that station so I'm using turf mostly for buffering and also joining geometries mm -hmm. um, so in polygon union and uh, preparing. Excellent. Um, so, how often how often is the data set refreshed? So, I mean, is, is the data source like updated frequently? And then, do you then update this on a regular basis? How does that work? Um, so, the the data source is uh, is a live endpoint, so it's going to be always up to date. But I'm not fetching it uh, on an interval right now. This is static data and I'm working towards making it uh, update every week. Um, yeah, but the, the, the data that's on this map is from uh, last December, I think. And if, um, if, you were, if you were to update it every week, is that because the, like the, is it, it's actually based on updates to the schedules, right? Which are changing all the time? Uh, Yes, that's right. Yeah, train schedules are bound to change. I don't know. There's sometimes some some road work or some improvements uh, in speed or just changing schedules. At Europe scale, it's bound to happen at least once a week somewhere. <laughs> so, are you you working on this completely solo? Um, did you have you know designer helping you, or do you uh, you know do you you also function as a designer on this project? Because um, I think it's you know it's. The overall presentation it's colorful but the you know the background is simple but you're highlighting countries uh, and the layout is fairly fairly simple but like you know works really well so you know how did how did all that happen is it just you you know having a multidisciplinary uh, skill set uh yeah i worked on this on my own um i do mostly front-end work in in my current job so um i <laughs> sort of gather the design sense from the designers I, I work with <laughs> and uh, try to put that with them to use. Uh, but yeah, thanks. That's really like the visual presentation. It's quite simple, but uh, frankly effective. Yeah, simple and effective. And a lot of times, as you know, less is more when it comes to, you know, these front end layouts. So just everything, everything in place with, with purpose. Um, so how did Mapbox's tools and platform help you build chrono trains? I think you mentioned that you use Studio a little bit in part of the design process, um, but is there is there anything else going on besides uh, Mapbox GLJS uh, plus your chrono, your isochrones and, and the styling and all that? Um, so I use Studio to just highlight the right uh, countries and um, also, it serves as a documentation for all the layers, so I can know where I put my data visualization layers, where I can place my uh, custom station labels. Um, apart from that, yeah, all the magic comes from uh, GLJS being very snappy at uh, displaying geodes and features uh, on the fly, and also like this. this style specification, obviously having worked at Mapbox, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with it, but it's um, yeah, it's, it's how I made the visualization. Um, what are the tools? I'm, I'm planning on adding a, a search bar feature, which would probably use uh, Mapbox geocoding. I'll also throw in an idea I had, but we actually have a new uh, search box. Uh, we have we actually have a new point of interest search also um, that could put on uh, like I don't know. It's just fascinating to me to 
see these isochrones appear, but maybe you can also show, you know, what's what's notable and interesting attractions uh, within certain you know periods um, to give you give people an idea of what they could go do. You know. Yeah, this would be interesting. Uh, the plan I had was to yeah to make this more into a trip planner. So if you click on Paris, it's going to su suggest uh, I don't know weekend plans. Uh, to Milan, for example, and the way that Mapbox search embeds, uh, I don't know, Wikidata information and maybe POI information uh, would be interesting to display some more useful info about the cities that you want to visit. Awesome. Um, and I, I just personally have you know, probably gotten 10 different uh, 10 different links of this sent to me over the last few months um, since it came out. I think it came out, what, last fall, maybe? Or November? Uh, in August. August. Wow. Okay. So it's been out for even longer. But uh, it seems like the traffic has been sustained and you've just had a lot of activity. Um, but I, I feel like every couple months, somebody is like, oh, you got to check out this thing because they know I love maps and, and work with digital maps. Uh, and I'm like, yes, I've seen it. It's awesome. Um, how has it been received? I mean, like, is it is it you know what's what's it been what's it felt like um you know what kind of press has it gotten like how, how's that been going for you um yeah so i i tweeted it uh, two days before going to vacation <laughs> and offline for two weeks and i came back to i don't know 60 thousand likes on on this tweet and uh i think if you're rich <laughs> the tweet gets uh gets some some press then uh digital media are going to try to write about it and get some clicks themselves. And it, um, in the first month, uh, I got a couple of million visitors, mm. uh, which is great. And now it's, uh, it's fading <laughs> a bit, obviously, but I'm trying to build a newer version that can be more than just an interesting database and more of a tool that you can use for trip planning. Awesome. Have have you gotten any have you gotten any feedback or or I guess attention from the rail networks themselves or the companies? Like do they do they consider this to be like a a celebration of their connectivity or has anybody been critical of you know the connectivity in certain areas that sort of thing? Uh, there's been some remarks about uh, some data missing or being uh, uh, incorrect. Um, but I haven't received so much feedback from from the rail networks uh, themselves. A few politicians in France and and in other countries have used this database as a political argument, which I found mm -hmm. interesting because I don't know. It tells a lot of stories that uh, I wasn't even aware of <laughs> uh, with my French perspective. Interesting. And I think actually that reminds me of you know other other guests I've had on this uh, on this series. Um, you know, these these kinds of maps can bring visibility to an otherwise obscure data set that would only be looked at by you know transit wonks or people that work in that industry. So um, more eyeballs, I think, is probably the best way to to improve that data quality. And hopefully, hopefully somebody's responding to that. Um, and you're you're the, just the medium for it. But I, I think this is something to be celebrated. Um, all right. So, what are the what are your other? You mentioned you know some things you want to add, but any other sort of big plans for the future for Chrono Trains? Um, you know, what should, what can we expect? Yeah, I'll try to spend a bit more time uh, on it. Um, I try to make it more useful to to plan a trip and uh, discover new places that you can reach easily by train. Um, I think it's quite frequent, a quite frequent question that I ask myself. <laughs> what can I do close to home uh, that doesn't require a car or flying uh, for a weekend trip? And um, yeah, for that, adding more information about the destinations, uh, better search capabilities uh, would be a first goal. I've also received some uh, feedback from companies who wanted to use that um, uh, in their travel policy to make sure that employees that uh, can travel, uh, you know, in less than eight hours to their destinations by train would not uh, try and book a, a flight ticket. Um, 
So longer time isochrones would be appreciated. I think I'll try to work on that. Awesome. Uh, in any case, I think it's awesome to just get the word isochrone in front of people, more people, um, <laughs> so they know what it is. But most people recognize it, but probably don't know what it's called. So uh, I think that's awesome. So All right, so that'll wrap up our developer spotlight with Benjamin Trandin, uh, who's the developer of Chrono Trains. Um, so I want to thank you for coming and uh, doing the spotlight with us. And uh, for those of you who are watching, um, you can follow Benjamin on Twitter at underscore Benjamin TD. Uh, and follow along to see what uh, what he does next with Chrono Trains. So thanks a lot for coming today. Thanks, Chris, for receiving me, and uh, thanks for your time. Okay, we'll see you at the next one. Bye. Bye.